whenever you hear the phrase public health or public health experts, you know, kind of check to make sure your wallet's still there. Because I translate that to political. So every time you hear public health, just remember, political. These are political officials, political appointees. They say they're career civil servants, but as you see with Dr. Fauci, he is as political as any United States senator or congressman or president. First up is the uh, new documents that we have from the uh, National Institutes of Health. We represented and are actually representing the Daily Caller News Foundation, uh, which had asked for documents tied to China, um, emails mostly, uh, 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 for Dr. Fauci and his, I think his top deputy, Dr. Lane, uh, Cliff Lane. And uh, we had received documents last year, uh, I publicly disclosed them, detailing how uh, in the early days of the COVID crisis, uh, Dr. Fauci uh, responded to an H uh, approved, uh, well, let's be more, let me take a step back. Uh, there was this entity, it's a WHO related entity, and they were putting out material and they went out of their way in the email uh, traffic saying, you know, you know, we've got to, we've got to especially praise China's efforts. And Fauci agreed to that press release. Uh, you know, they wanted to focus on all the countries. Let me see if I have the specific language from uh, that older press release. Uh, this is the latest. Um, yeah, the email showing pushing for a press release approved by Dr. Fauci, especially supporting China's COVID-19 response. Now, my guess is you haven't heard about that email and that issue from the big media and or big tech. You've heard about it from Judicial Watch and obviously our friends at Daily Call News Foundation, who's our client here. So what they've been doing is they've been slow rolling the release of documents. So we've been getting the documents and there's another batch we've uh, reviewed and we're going to be releasing officially on Monday, but I'll talk to you about it today. And these are documents I don't. I think there are Fauci's on some of the emails in the larger group of documents, but the specific emails I'm talking about mostly deal with his deputy over there uh, at NIH, uh, Dr. Lane. Uh, again, the lawsuit was filed for communications between Dr. Fauci and Deputy Director Lane and World Health Organization officials concerning the novel coronavirus. Communications of Dr. Fauci and Deputy Director Lane concerning WHO, WHO, uh, Official uh, Bruce Alward, WHO Director uh, General Tedros, I um, uh, can't read this here, I gotta get my glasses, Anaheim, and China. So basically, what our friends at Daily Call are asked for were giving us documents about China, COVID, and what was going on early on at NIH about COVID. And uh, as I said, we've been getting the stonewall and the runaround. The fact is, we had to sue for the documents. So, uh, Dr. Fauci, we're being told, has to review and approve all of his emails before they're released, which is rather unusual uh, given um, our experience in FOIA. I'm not aware previously of uh, that being the case in any other FOIA litigation. I could be wrong, uh, I mean, any other FOIA litigation that we've been in, involved in, but I, I don't remember anything that happened. And we filed hundreds of Freedom of Information Act requests so my memory isn't perfect as I get older, uh, but uh, I've been doing this for 22, 23 years, and I'm unaware of a senior official personally approving, at least admittedly, personally approving the release of his own or her, her own emails. Just, uh, I'm not, but Fauci, he gets special treatment, it seems. So, uh, he, so going back to what the subset of documents show uh, with his deputy, Mr. Lane, or Dr. Lane, uh, they show that the, there was this accommodation given to China on confidentiality and other communication control. Uh, there was a uh, confidentiality form uh, that they had previously used, and the emails indicate uh, that uh, they needed to be changed, and they were changed. And this is the phrase they use. The forms this time are tailored 
to China's terms, so we cannot use the ones from before. Tailored to China's terms. I'm not sure what those terms were, but do you think they're good? Do you think they're on the side of transparency or otherwise accountability? I doubt it. Another HWHO briefing package was sent to NIH officials traveling to China as part of the COVID-19 response. And it asked that the officials uh, not share information until they have agreement with China. Important, important, it's all in caps. Please treat this as a sensitive and not for public communication until we have agreed communications with China. So China seemed to be given some sort of veto power, the way I read this email, over communications concerning COVID. This is why WHO, uh, that's what, this is why President Trump pulled the United States of America from WHO because it was acting as a, a front for China as opposed to an independent agency that would neutrally pursue public health measures. Now, I was thinking about this today. Um, whenever you hear the phrase public health or public health experts, you know, kind of check to make sure your wallet's still there. Because I translate that to political. So every time you hear public health, just remember, political. These are political officials, political appointees. They say they're career civil servants, but as you see with Dr. Fauci, he is as political as any United States senator or congressman or president. And arguably, he's given more influence and power than our own elected officials, even though he's appointed. Uh, so that's what was going on. And we've exposed it through a lawsuit. It was not exposed by Congress. It was not volunta voluntarily disgorged to our clients, the Daily Caller News Foundation, by NIH. We had to sue for the basic information about what was going on with China and such and WHO on, on a public health, <laughs> I use that phrase again, issue that shut down the entire world. So once again, it's Judicial Watch that comes in to get information that you would think everyone in the country and the media establishment and the political class would want access to. Nope. Nope. I mean, it really does highlight the corruption of the media, doesn't it? And the corruption of the oversight body that Congress is supposed to be. They have little to zero interest, the community structure in Congress and conducting real oversight. Uh, uh, the media is is just about, in many ways, it's not saying they don't do journalism here and again and don't do something useful in terms of highlighting government misconduct and abuse and just telling us what the government's up to. Uh, but kind of the energy is directed towards advancing ideological narratives uh, and more dangerously, suppressing opponents. So anything that undermines the credibility of the government agencies that uh, now that Dr. Fauci is the head of, he's been head of it for some time, at least this particular aspect of the NIH, they're not going to, they don't want to cover, they don't want to pursue, they don't want to ask any questions about. And this is why Judicial Watch's work is so important. The Daily Caller News Foundation is, is, the ex exception, is the exception that proves the rule. They're asking for questions because they're serious journalists here. Judicial Watch, in my view, does more serious journalism in terms of exposing and educating Americans about what the government's up to than the New York Times, the Washington Post, and all the big media combined, especially on the issues of government corruption. Uh, so uh, what else did we find? And there was also a, a strategic study, excuse me, there was a study, uh, not a, I wouldn't call it a study, they called it an epi-analysis, which I took to mean epidemiological analysis of COVID. And what was, the, how did they want to handle that? They wanted to handle that is, um, it shall not be further disseminated. So there was a secret analysis that was done that we don't know much about beyond what the email says. So it was marked by, these emails show secrecy and accommodations to China. 
And as I said already, there was a, a press release that went out of its way uh, to, um, uh, in terms of describing the response to coronavirus, went out of its way specifically with the Fauci's approval, and this is the previous documents we've uncovered, uh, to uh, praise China. And as I said in my comment, these new emails show that WHO and Fauci's NIH um, had special accommodations to the Chinese communists efforts to uh, control information about COVID. I mean, the emails are going to be out and they're, they're going to be out on Monday. You can look at them when they come out and you can draw your own conclusions. But that's my analysis of it. I mean, COVID is, I mean, we could have an entire judicial watch, or kind of a, even, you know, there's enough to, for judicial watch to do nothing but COVID investigations in terms of the disruption to our economy, the destruction of our, um, uh, of jobs, the undermining of our liberties, the misconduct and abuse and suppressing information related to COVID. I mean, as I said before, it bears worth repeating because it's outrageous. I am still locked out of Twitter over an innocuous tweet I made about hydroxychloroquine. Completely innocuous and one that hit specifically the language I've been, I, re, I, I sometimes repeat tweets because I recognize that people don't see the tweets initially. So I repeat them. So more people see them. And the language I had used repeatedly had specifically been complained about before by Twitter. And Twitter um, found that the language was not in violation of its terms of service. But all of a sudden, they told me I needed to take it down. And even if I did, I'd be locked out for seven days. So I appealed it. And it's now six weeks later. They haven't done jack on it. So the tweet was accurate. It was true. It didn't even mention COVID. It didn't mention COVID. <laughs> Didn't mention COVID. But what is the science behind the mask? What is the science behind social distancing? What is the science behind mass lockdowns of people who are seemingly healthy? There is no science behind it in the terms of credible science that's been tested as Fauci would have us test emerging treatments, meaning you have a randomized, controlled randomized control study. The gold standard, right? You got a group X, and you got group Y. X has the placebo. Y has the intervention. And you figure out if it works. That hasn't there's no science behind any of the interventions, as best I can tell in that regard. There's some observational studies, which we're told don't work for certain treatments, but do work for masks. What's, for instance, the basis for six feet separation? I'm asking. Tell me. Why not five feet? Why not 12 feet? Shouldn't it be long? Should it be, should it be more? And more importantly, what is the basis for mass lockdowns that have never been used in world history, never before used to control the spread of anything. I mean, there have been restrictions on public events, I guess, during the 1918 epidemic, but modest and short term. I mean, Fauci is now saying initially said that you shouldn't wear masks. Then he said you should wear masks. And he said, even if you're vaccinated, we'll have to be wearing masks, even if the country, I shouldn't say even if you are. Well, I think he has said, even if you are vaccinated, you should still be careful about your activities, meaning restrict your public activities. So when I say political, I mean political. I mean, the good news is we have some of these vaccines that um, it combined with the fact that people are getting increased natural immunity to COVID and top of the vaccines, we should be in a position where even, even the um, 
the lockdown fanatics won't be able to be persuade persuade anyone that uh, continued lockdowns are appropriate. Our children are being locked out of their schools. That's what I'm concerned about. That's that. Who's standing in the court in the schoolhouse door against our children? You can't get them to to do what kids want to be able to do, and what the parents want them to be able to do, which is to learn and not be traumatized. So we got a bunch of Freedom of Information Act requests on this. We're getting more documents uh, that as we speak. So stay tuned for more there. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all the latest news from Judicial Watch.